Morena Koto. Apologies for the slight delay. We're all together. Ata Maria Kia Koto, Ata Maria David. Tena koe. Tena koe, Teresa. Ata Maria. Tena koe. Um, koto ma, uh, ma taki taki mai nei te mihi kia koto. Um, thought we would let you know how today's webinar is going to run quickly before we hand over to David. So today we're going to open with a karakia, a tuwhera ai te wānanga. Um, this fireside chat wānanga um, is rather informal, but we will open with a karakia um, and then do some introductions about who we are, personally, myself, and then David will introduce himself to you all. Um, and then David will run through uh, his presentation about uh, the Waitangi Tribunal and a review of the Waitangi Tribunal from a participant observer uh, point of view. After that, we will be taking questions, so feel free to send through your questions. And during the presentation, I'll be asking those questions on your behalf to David. Um, and then at the end, we'll do a little wrap up um, and then we'll close with a karakia just to settle the space and settle the words in the wānanga and also in consideration of the time that we're currently in. So we'll start with a karakia just to open this wānanga, um, which do tāni to wānanga. <laughs> Tiki na tūra ko te mauri o rangi ko te mauri o papa ko te mauri o tāne whakapiripiri ko te mauri o tāne te wānanga ko te mauri o te aroha no fe te mauri no runga no roto no waho no raro sitia mai te mauri ki e nei piki a mokura e there we go. That'll just open our open our wānanga. Talk to Tāne, to wānanga and Tāne Whakapiripiri so that our wānanga can be opened. All right. So, nei rata mihi ka koutou. Ko moa huia goza tuku ingoa. He uri hau no Ngāti Kaupata, Ngāti Raukawa, Ngāti Matakori, Ngāti Haua. Nei rata mihi ka koutou. I will be your chair for today. I have the privilege of chairing this session uh, for David. Very excited. Um, as a current claimant in the Y2575 Kaupapa uh, Inquiry and also part of my iwi uh, claims team. So Nata Tumihi Kia Koto, I'm personally excited. I hope you all are. Uh, that's me and I'll hand over to David to do introductions and he can go straight into his court at all. Nata Tumihi. Kei a koe, David. Tēnā koe. Tēnā koe hoa. Kā ahau ngā kupu o tō karakia ri tēnei ata mauri Mauri ora ki a koe, ki a koutou katoa, ki a tātou katoa. Uh, ko Rawari Wurumu ahau, ko Raikatia, te maunga, ko Manawa Tūtaua, ko Ngāti Pākea te iwi, ko Rarui, Rarui Wurumu ahau. But that doesn't tell you very much about what we're going to talk about. It just says that I come from a sheep farm on, the, on, the, on, a, on a range in Southern Hawke's Bay near the headwaters of the, Waik, of the Manawatu River. Um, and very surprisingly, I'm talking about the Waitangi Tribunal today because sheep farmers' sons from Hawke's Bay going to conservative schools like I did probably sh shouldn't have had the sort of career I've had, but I'm lucky to have had one that uh, has involved a lot of work with the Waitangi Tribunal. Going right back to um, why number one. What Why number are you up to, Teresa? What's your... Oh, she's muted. What, what's your why number? Uh, why? Hmm? Six, seven, nine. Yeah, so that's that's into the thousands. Well, it all started with why number one. So why number one was was Joe Hawke. Um, he had uh, held the um, the po of the Matakite Aotearoa as they walked over the Harbour Bridge. Uh, but before that, he'd gone out uh, with his um, Fano to get some kaimwana to feed the uh, people from the land march in 1975. Uh, as they went, walked through Auckland and were fed at Tungawaka Marae. And they took more than the Fisheries Act allowed, apparently, and uh, Joe Hawke got uh, prosecuted. Uh, and he said it was a customary take, and he took a case to the Waitangi Tribunal. Well, would you believe, um, you probably wouldn't, uh, that uh, the hearing of that first Waitangi Tribunal was in the ballroom of the smartest hotel in Auckland at the time, 
Hotel Intercontinental, it was then called. Um, um, drapes around the wall, chandeliers, the tribunal members were up on a, a platform looking down on us. Uh, it was the middle of the Bastion Point Takapotofo occupation, so there was quite a few people in the room who had come in to support Joe. He was told to go and get a lawyer, and he said he thought he could speak well enough. I was told to go and get him a lawyer because I should know that he should have a lawyer. So he got a lawyer who then stood up and said, um, Mr. Hawke wants to say something. That's all the lawyer ever did. He stood up <laughs> and said, could Mr. Hawke speak? And Mr. Hawke spoke. The tribunal did nothing. Uh, they said um, that um, although he'd been convicted, he hadn't been fined or given any other punishment. Uh, and so there was no prejudice that he as a Māori person had suffered. So therefore, the jurisdiction of the White Dunga Tribunal um, didn't even um, need to be um, utilised at all. So that was Chief Judge Galanda Scott. Joe Hawke always called him Gilligander Scott for some reason. Uh, that sound, sounded a bit different, I suppose. Um, so the Waitangi Tribunal didn't start off on a great note, and uh, the next hearing wasn't much better. Um, it related to a, a thermal power station that was going to be built uh, on the Mon edge of the Monaco Harbour, and, and the government changed its mind, and instead of the tribunal inquiring into what uh, issues there were for the people of Far Tapaka Marae, they said, um, no, we're not going to inquire into that. So under Chief Judge um, Galanda Scott, the, uh, the chair, um, the, the tribunal was totally ineffective and very few Māori took any notice of it all, which would have been very disappointing for Matthew Rata because Matthew had been the Minister of Māori Affairs in the Labour government from 72 to 75. And it was his initiative to bring in that tribunal and originally, from 1975 to 1985, it could only um, look at claims for the future. Um, the tribunal only came to life in 1982. Um, in the, the, the government had a Think Big project in those days for the methanol plant uh, uh, at, um, um, at uh, Waitara, or near Waitara, uh, Urunui, um, Motunui, in that area of North Taranaki. Uh, and the local iwi led by Ayla Taylor from Tatiawa said, look, we're not going to have our Kaimuana gathering areas polluted. And by this stage, um, Eddie Taihakure Duri had become the chair of the tribunal as the chief judge, first um, Māori person to be a chief judge. There had been some people of Māori descent on the tribe, on the land court before, but he was the first to be the chief judge. And he wrote to me and said, look, um, I'm having trouble um, with the Justice Department. They, they want to have the hearing in a hotel in New Plymouth. And I gather you wrote a, a letter to the um, Minister of Māori Affairs about um, the first tribunal hearing. I, I certainly did. Um, and I, so I sent him that. And he used that as a uh, as a bit of a, a rod to beat the back of the Justice Department. So that hearing took place at Monokorihi Marae uh, and made some favourable recommendations, which the government immediately rejected. Mr Muldoon probably didn't even read it, but he rejected it. But to his credit and that of Bill Birch and others in the national government at the time, they reconsidered in the light of a wave of criticism from all around the Motu, saying, hang on, here's the Waitanga Tribunal, it's looked at the issues, it's made a report, um, and it's come up with a compromise solution. Um, why don't you go for that? And um, so from that time onwards, the tribunal started to get a bit more credibility uh, in everyone's eyes. And then the next stage uh, is the Monaco uh, Harbour hearings, um, or Manuka, the local people call it. Um, and Paul Tem had been appointed to the tribunal for that hearing, a QC. Um, very orthodox, conservative uh, sort of a lawyer. He had represented the National Party in one or two electoral petitions, so he was no bleeding-heart liberal, and he couldn't understand how you could have a, a, a judicial proceeding uh, in a marae, and he thought it was a ridiculous idea, but he'd better go along with it because he'd been appointed to the tribunal. Um, and this was held at Il Matau, um, a name which resonates with us all even more now, uh, owing to recent events. But at that little uh, 
Whareihui there, the tribunal met. Um, Sean Elias was the was the lawyer that took the case. That's the first time she got involved. Later, she became the chief justice and is still really keen to promote the sort of issues that we're going to be talking about today. And and uh, during the course of that hearing, um, Te Arangi Kahu, the Māori Queen, arrived and didn't make any fuss about herself. Sat at the back of the of the hui just to talk all the claimants. By the end of that, poor Tam had been so convinced of what a fantastic way it was to hear the issues and then to write up the report that he went to just about every Rotary Club in New Zealand, I think, um, and, uh, and, and, and said that the issues that had been raised before this tribunal were really important, that Park Out people had no idea about our history, no idea about what had happened uh, in the very areas that we lived in, um, and we really ought to know. And, and, uh, and shortly after that, um, the um, government changed and the Labour government brought in uh, the retrospective jurisdiction so the tribunal uh, was able to look at uh, historical issues. Um, and so you then get um, a complete change and the tribunal becomes really significant and on occasions um, really controversial because um, the tribunal inquiries in respect of Muri Whenua uh, and my Tahu fisheries came out with really clear findings that Māori had economic interests in in uh, in fisheries, not just uh, 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 not just going and collecting a few tour tour uh, for the um, for the hui at the marae, feed guests to the tangihana or whatever, but commercial uh, a history of commercial uh, engagement, and so the government couldn't go and. Um, institute a new private property system of individual transferable quota without looking at the people who had previous economic and property interests in fisheries. Um, and at one stage in the late 1980s, I think uh, race relations was considered the most pressing issue um, in, in the country, in the terms of the politics of the country, in terms of opinion polls. Why? Because there was this damn Māori tribunal that was making decisions in favour of Māori. Well, of course, it's not a Māori tribunal. It's a government-appointed tribunal. All the members are appointed by the government. Um, since 1985, it's been very keen to be a bicultural um, uh, body, uh, and it has a lot of people of a range of expertise on it. Some of the hearings that I was involved in, giving evidence as an historian, um, included a, a judge, district court judge, um, uh, Tuhoi Komatua, uh, a historian, and uh, a former chair of the Federated Farmers. Um, so it, it uh, representative of a range of New Zealanders. Um, and, uh, and, and so for several decades now, we've been having historical claims inquiries um, around the country. And initially, they were quite... Um, um, they, they advanced... Māori issues quite dramatically to the forefront of, of our, our political stage. And the government was totally on the back foot, unable to quite know what to do because they didn't really have a policy. I remember Geoffrey Palmer saying once at an academic conference I was at that um, the trouble that he had as, as Minister of Justice was that everyone he consulted uh, on matters relating to the Treaty of Waitangi turned out to be pro-Māori, and he wanted someone to be pro-Crown. Um, and so he thought we better have a, a, a some group of people appointed to to advise the crown on something that might be pro crown rather than always just pro Māori. So that was sort of part of the of the historical background um, there. Uh, eventually, of course, in the 1990s, um, the government did try and get its act together and came up with the fiscal envelope proposal, which was rejected unanimously by everyone, except that. Um, Doug Graham persuaded Jim Bolger and Jim Bolger persuaded the cabinet to say, well, even if they do, Māori don't like it, that's the policy we're going to put in place. And so since 1995, the Waitangi Tribunal has worked sort of in tandem with what was the Office of Treaty Settlements, what's now um, uh, Te Kahui Whakato within Te Arafiti, the new Māori Crown Relations Agency. Um, and I'll call it OGS because that's what everyone still calls it, Office of Treaty Settlements, they, they then were the place you had to go to 
if you were a claimant group that wanted to get a settlement. So the tribunal became primarily the place where you presented the evidence um, of your historical claims. It's always seemed to me that it's, it's the wrong way around, really, in the tribunal process. Uh, in some ways, it should be that the government comes along and says, this is how we got hold of the land, and it was fairly done and it was lawful, but it's not that way. Māori claimants have to come along and say, this is how the Crown got our land, and it was unfair and, um, and wrong and contrary to the Treaty of Waitangi and contrary to the uh, sovereignty of Māori people under Te Whakaputanga or um, uh, or Tarangatira Tanga or New Terrain, however Māori had wanted to put it, it was on Māori to present the evidence. Anyway, um, originally the tribunal thought there'd only be a few historical inquiries, but it actually turned out that the tribunal became something of a, something approaching a Truth and Reconciliation Commission where, where where Māori for the first time uh, really had a chance to speak in person and clearly tell their stories. There had been inquiries into the past. There was a Sim Commission back in the 1920s. There were some partial settlements in the 1940s, but there never were an opportunity for the corridor and the, um, the mamai from the past to be recounted in a public forum uh, to a body appointed by, by the Crown and responsible to making recommendations to the Crown. And so those tribunal hearings in the late 80s and right through the 90s and into this century um, have involved an enormous amount of um, effort by, um, by claimant um, groups. Um, uh, I use the term claimant groups because, of course, um, the government always likes to negotiate with iwi or large natural groupings. Um, and so that became part of the problem with the tribunal process as time went by, that, um, that instead of there being just one or two lawyers in the room and the tribunal members there, um, who included amazing people like Ta Monitor, Delamere, the Po of the Ringatu, Tahahi Ringatu, and, and um, Piopa Manu Bennett of Tahahi uh, Mihinari and Farihuri and Mil Milroy, Tuhoi, all those sorts of um, people, John Rangiho, um, and historians um, like Keith Sorensen and, uh, uh, and, and others of, of great distinction sitting on the tribunal um, hearing these claims. Um, but uh, at some point in, in the late 1990s, lawyers worked out that they could get legal aid um, and... Uh, and uh, and then not just legal aid for the large natural grouping, but legal aid for every whānau that felt it didn't quite agree with the posture taken by their komata at the last hui. And they'd all turn up with their separate lawyers. There was one here I went to where I think I counted 56 lawyers in the room. Um, that was not a really good procedure, I don't think at all. Um, so that So I became less enchanted with the tribunal as time went by. Uh, and also the tribunal for very good pragmatic reasons, perhaps, realised that um, it, it should make findings about historical claims and then it should leave it up to the claimants to negotiate directly with the Crown because that's what they had to do to get a settlement. And if they wanted a settlement, uh, that was the route they had to go. Um, so the, early, the earlier phase, the tribunal made lots of recommendations. With respect to Orake, they made a whole range of recommendations which were then implemented uh, in the Orake Act of 1991. Um, and, uh, uh, but, um, but later on, the tribunal just said, our recommendation is that you have a well-founded claim, you have suffered considerable prejudice, this is a very significant claim, and the government should attend to it uh, with as much generosity as it can. Um, by David, that I just point, have a couple of really good questions, so I just wonder if I can jump in there. I've got a question. Um, is it true that only 5% of the tribunal's recommendations have been implemented since 1975? Do you know if that's true or not? Could you answer that? Uh, oh, there's lots of, yeah, that's a good good part. I, uh, there's lots of um, ways of trying to work that out. Um, uh, the tribunal um, um, 
has, well, I've been focusing in my quarter just now on the historical inquiries. Um, uh, the tribunal, of course, has dealt with a whole range of other issues. The Y262 claim was a, was a big one, and it made lots and lots of recommendations. Uh, it was originally on flora and fauna, but it became a wide-ranging constitutional challenge, really, to, to mm. the Crown's right to be in charge of everything. How come the, 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 the treaty partner that came second um, gets to decide everything about, about everything? Water is the most recent issue, fresh water. Um, uh, so that uh, the, 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 the at, at one stage I saw some figures which said 50-50, 50% um, uh, successful and 50% unsuccessful rather than 5%. It depends what you mean by successful, of course, because um, uh, if you get to the um, settlements from the, from the OTS and which get translated into law, that's where I think your five percent comes in. If if you look at the total losses of, uh, and you try and do some economic analysis of it, Tainui did at the early stages in the in 1995. They reckon that um, they got back about four uh, percent in the treaty settlement of what they had lost, um, and 96 percent was their gift to the nation, uh, so to speak, and they put it in an honourable way. Um, but uh, certainly the uh, treaty settlements, the 5% figure would be generous. Many treaty settlements would be less than 5% of the value of the, of the land that was stolen or um, acquired by unfair means or using the, um, um, uh, the, the, the Tango Whenua, I call it, that's the land taking court, uh, the native land court. I didn't really introduce myself very well, did I? I didn't say anything about who I am. Uh, I'm basically a political activist who got going on race relations issues back in 1975, um, worked with um, Joe Hawke and others from Ngāti Whātu Ōrāke, um, uh, worked as a uh, unpaid lawyer because um, lawyers wouldn't act for Māori claimants in the early years. Uh, and I, um, uh, uh, at some point I became respectable um, because uh, <laughs> <Why? Why helpful? laughs> because people realised that the treaty was important. Uh, when I say people, it's always been important for Māori. Māori have always been talking about it in the marae, but it became important for the public discourse of the whole nation. Um, and so uh, someone, people like myself and Jane Kelsey at the University of Auckland, who were crying out there in the wilderness, we were called bloody stirrers who are, you know, Māori are really, really happy people, except these stirrers, like these university lecturers that get them upset. Well, all that nonsense is long since gone. Uh, and uh, 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 and so it became my role as a historian, mainly, to, to be working in the, in, in the tribunal. Um, on, 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 um, on some of the contemporary claims, Teresa, the tribunal record is... is, is is um, very unsuccessful. So claims about petroleum resources, claims about airwaves, um, um, and uh, the auction of a spectrum, um, uh, and, and so on. Uh, I think the tribunal record uh, is that most of their recommendations are rejected by the government. The big one, of course, foreshore and seabed. The tribunal did an excellent report giving six options to the government. Um, that uh, wouldn't have been so um, undermining of Māori claims uh, as the government's proposal, and the, and the gov government just rejected all all six options. Didn't didn't uh, spend very much time doing that. So yeah, that uh, that's sort of how, how they've gone on on uh, on on the current claims. Um, David, could you, um, another question just from um, the Fano is, could you elaborate a bit more about Y262 and Y1040? Give us an overview about those ones. Uh, well, Y262 um, was a magnificent claim put together um, by um, a, a, a group of amazing people from around the Motu, um, uh, Sana Murray, um, Del Weehongi, uh, Witty McMath, um, John Hippolyte, uh, they were the main ones I can remember. All of them have now gone by. Um, um, and 
it, it started off with, uh, with Kumara. Um, Tipu had been taken back to Japan because the DSIR didn't want them anymore. And uh, Del Wihongi heard about this at Ahui in Christchurch and got really upset and said, what's a government research scientist doing just dumping this, this, this heirloom, heirloom uh, kumara? These are not the kumara we grow these days. They're not the commercial stuff. These are ancient, ancient forms, varieties and species of, of, of kumara that have been grown for centuries in this, in this, in this part of the world. Um, and um, at the end of the day, we actually realized that, the government, that, that, that it was really good that Dr. Yen had taken the, uh, all that um, heirloom um, Kumara stock back to Japan, because otherwise it would have lost it. It would have just gone to the rubbish dump. That was what would what otherwise have happened. But from there, uh, it became part of a, a much wider um, range of issues. Um, uh, around the human genome project and intellectual property rights and who says that that corridor can go on the tail of Air New Zealand anyway um, and uh, cultural appropriation. And by the way, what is the legitimacy of this government anyway to make all these decisions? And so it became a constitutional challenge. Um, oh, and, why? And, Think uh, it's it. Yeah, well, that, that, uh, yeah. but then it got packed down again. It got narrowed down again into something um, more contemporary. So the only the only um, the only major historical bit in that tribunal inquiry was the Tonga Suppression Act, which I'd given some evidence about, and uh, it was recognised that that was a particularly egregious example of of government um, suppression of of Maturanga Māori uh, and Tikana, um, uh, and uh, but the but the report nevertheless had some particularly useful. Um, recommendations as a, a whole of government report. So it wasn't just about this particular iwi and this particular uh, take to do with incarceration of, of Māori in prison. It was a, a, a broad report about um, the, um, the, relationships, the relationships for now and for the future uh, between Kupe's people and Cook's people. That's how the tribunal put it in Ko Aotearoa Tene which is the Y262 report. Um, and a very few of those, of, of the actual recommendations uh, in there have been picked up. One or two have been in terms of Māori Advisory Committee for patents and so on. And I know um, Ngāti Tōrangatira, for example, have now got legislation that protects um, uh, Kamati Kamati uh, Haka of uh, Taropraha. Uh, as their intellectual property, uh, and that needs to be acknowledged if people um, use that haka at all. Um, so there have been one or two minor things. Most of it, um, I, I have heard Nanaya Mahuta say in very recent times that that's really important to her, that Y262 report. So keep watching that space. Um, they, they, it, it, it's a, it's a, a report that should balance issues up a good deal uh, more than they are at the moment. At the moment, the government decides who they're going to consult with amongst Māori, uh, by and large. Are we going to consult with the Iwi Leaders Forum, or are we going to consult with this, this particular Iwi or that, or are we going to create our own advisory body, um, and, and so on. And so the, um, the Y1040, the Ngāpui Nui Tonu um, uh, claims um, are really important from that point of view as well, because... Funnily enough, it's called the Waitangi Tribunal and the treaty is called the Treaty of Waitangi. Of course, the Treaty of Waitangi was signed in many parts of the country, but the first signing was at Waitangi and the tribunal is called the Waitangi Tribunal. Virtually the last claimant to get to the tribunal is, is, <laughs> is the people of Waitangi. Virtually the very last. I mean, you, you, you lot in, uh, in, uh, down there in, um, in Otaki and uh, Kapiti are, are struggling along at the end of the process as well for your historical inquiry. But... Um, but Napui were very clear, um, uh, at least they were united on this, and that is that the tribunal should look at the um, Pakaputanga Meta Treaty, look at the Declaration of Independence and the Treaty of Waitangi, and what did it mean for Napui at the time, before they would look into any historical issues that arose after 1840. Started 1835, October the 28th, um, that's Rangatiratanga. Yeah, Pakaputanga 
o te ranga tiratanga o New Tereni. Um, and then after that comes the Treaty of Waitangi. And rather than the Treaty of Waitangi being a supplanting of Māori sovereignty, it was been seen as an affirmation of Māori sovereignty, if you want to use the word sovereignty. These words all get a bit mixed up because that's really Pākehā concept anyway, uh, sovereignty. But if you claim the power to govern and rule and decide which law should apply, um, the tribunal in the Y1040 said actually um, Māori did not give that up in 1840. Um, so that's another important constitutional issue. There's Mātiki, um, um, what's it, Mātiki, my, Mātiki Aotearoa, um, if I got the right name of the report, um, that uh, uh, Margaret Mutu, Moana Jackson and others um, have um, been to dozens and dozens of hui all around the country and have raised a, a number of constitutional options. Um, Professor Fatarangi Winiata of Ngati Rokoa has been advancing constitutional options. There was some, there's a Rokoa wave in the background there. Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 constitutional options. So uh, there is that discussion, but each time, each time we have a discussion about the constitution, uh, there's been a constitutional advisory committee and you know, the Māori party insisted that there had to be some further work on constitutional issues. But you know, each time it comes up, um, everyone says, oh God, this is too hard. Um, it's contentious and people sort of walk away. So, um, so those two reports, Y262 and Y1040 are the two that, that raise those wider issues. But the claimants in the Y262 would have wanted it to go even further than, than, uh, than the tribunal actually did in the end. Um, so yeah. Where do we go from now, Teresa? Have you got some more questions for me? I do, actually. So um, I'm a claimant in the Y2575 OPAPA inquiry into health. And in regards to your, claim, in regards to your statements about the whakapapa of the Waitangi Tribunal and some successes and some um, inefficiencies as well, what... What are your thoughts about the Kaupapa inquiries and the future of the tribe and how effective these Kaupapa inquiries could be for Māori, given the history of the tribunal and their recommendations? Yeah, well, so for the benefit of the other people listening and uh, in future watching, um, the when, when it was becoming clear that the tribunal was getting to the end of its um, most of the work on the historical claims in the various districts that they'd created around the country, um, they said, well, what's left? Because we've had these two or 3,000 uh, claims that have come in, um, and, and what haven't we yet attended to? And one of the earliest claims, one of the very earliest claims was the Rating Act um, and the, the impact of the rating laws on, on Māori land. Because the kopapa of the... Um, Māori land march back in 1975 was not one more acre. Well, actually quite a few more acres have continued to be taken from, from Māori through councils saying, well, you haven't paid your rates for the last 15 years and we're going to take the land. Um, and, and, uh, and then there were military veterans and then there was um, some criminal justice issues and some education issues. And so they created a list of... Um, uh, of contemporary kopapa, which are important for the future. And uh, I think you're involved in, in, in one of the health um, uh, claims. So they tried to consolidate them together a little bit um, and, uh, uh, and they are working through that. Um, so there's those kopapa uh, inquiry claims. There's also urgent, urgency hearings. So every so often something comes up and claimants go and say, well, look, the government's about to sign up a, a free trade deal with um, countries all around the world and what regard have they paid to, to Māori prior interests and rangatiratanga? And the answer to that is they've usually paid a modest token uh, interest and, and not, uh, not enough. And so people go to the tribunal and say, it's not enough what the government's doing. And the tribunal usually says, no, it's not enough uh, or it's not quite enough or um, and, um, you, and, and, and something more should be done. Um, so uh, I, I don't know how that's going to work out. I, the, the, there's the, the freshwater and geothermal inquiry is one of those. 
um, the, um, the, the government ministers gave affidavits to the Supreme Court, um, or to the proceedings which finished up in the Supreme Court over Mighty River Power, the, semi, the private part privatization of the energy companies, and said, um, oh, that privatization can go ahead because Māori interests can still be taken into account in some other way. Um, the tribunal, of oh, course- I didn't know that, didn't know about that one. Well, the tribunal, of course, though, um, uh, in its, in its um, stage two, I think, freshwater and geothermal report uh, has, has said that it's made recommendations, but of course, it's, it can only make recommendations. It may be that Māori will have to finish up going to the courts to try and get clarity as to whether there are prior property interests, um, even though the government says no one owns water. Um, uh, who, who says that no one owns water? Oh, the government says that no one owns water. And so how is it that the Resource Management Act allows government bodies to control who can use water and where and when and how much dairy conversion can take place and so on? And all those issues are under the control of the government because no one owns water. But what about, well, geothermal um, and water? Uh, why Māori is pretty important uh, if, you, if you go back um, and... Uh, how does it work out into the, the, the contemporary legal and constitutional framework? And, and, I, and I guess the difficulty that, um, that Māori claimants are always going to have in this country is that we've got uh, an extraordinarily flexible um, constitution. And at the end of the day, even if the Supreme Court says something, uh, the government can come along and change it the next day or a few months later with some legislation. And we don't have any constitutional safeguards for the treaty, and we don't have any um, uh, people say that the treaty is part of the foundation of the nation and is a constitutional document, um, but it's but it's um, not something that can be enforceable as such. That's our, our current position. So um, the co inquiries inquiries um, uh, are, are very useful to gather together the body of Mātauranga Māori about a particular issue, um, the way in which uh, Tinaranga Tiratanga can work out implementing policies for Māori, by Māori, those sorts of claims can be put forward. But the tribunal is still what it always has been. It's an instrument of the Crown. The people are appointed by the government and they can only make recommendations to government ministers. It's up to the government ministers to then decide what to do. Now, of course, the government ministers, a few of them are Māori these days, um, and a few members of parliament are Māori, and so the Crown isn't quite as Pākehā as it used to be, um, but it seems to op operate in a pretty Pākehā way, would be my observation. Um, and, uh, and so uh, there's plenty of um, opportunity for more kōrero, more mamai, uh, and uh, I don't know whether we'll get more settlements, who knows. Halfway. I do have a couple more questions um, and I'm aware we've only got 20 minutes left. So this is another question. Um, can you take us through why 342 and why 215 about alienation by sale and how will this affect the future? Do you know those why claims? Uh, who, who are the claimants in those ones? No, I don't think that, the why numbers don't mean anything to me. I have to have a look actually. Um, even I don't. We might come back to that question while I find out the payment details for that one. Um, this one here. How can Māori make a claim against the constitutional safeguards of the Tutuji or Waitangi? I'm from so, another attendee. Yeah, so one of the, um, one of the uh, difficulties, um, but also the opportunities of the Waitangi Tribunal uh, jurisdiction is that when it was first enacted back in 1975 uh, under the leadership of Matu Rata, um, it, the statement was any Māori may make a claim. So one of the early claimants was a Pākehā fellow that says, I object to the fact that only Māori can make a claim. Anyway, that, that was thrown out, of course. Uh, so it's any, but it's any Māori. It's not any mandated group. It's not any large natural grouping. It's not, um, it's just, you, you have to whaka papa, um, uh, have Māori ancestry, and then you can make a claim. And then you have to show you've been prejudiced in some way. Um, 
And uh, so uh, whether it be constitutional safeguard issues, whether it be what's happening at the local sewerage treatment plant, whatever the issue is, whether it's historic or whether it's current, any Māori may lay, lay a claim with the tribunal. Uh, it's up to the tribunal as to whether they give that claim any urgency um, or not, uh, or, or combine it together with other uh, similar claims. Uh, but um, uh, uh, the tribunal um, has um, issued a number of practice notes over the years, and they they they, they quite often will say that uh, they're not um, they're not going to look at an issue because uh, at a particular claim because they've already primarily dealt with that issue. But um, uh, as things come up, um, uh, you you may make a claim if you're Maori and and lots of people do. Um, and um, there are um, lawyers that can take the claim and there are claimants that are prepared to speak for themselves. Um, but uh, uh, the tribunal process is only part of the wide spectrum. We, it, it, it's primarily a political constitution we've got. That's the point I made before, because at the end of the day, the government can always overrule everything that the tribunal says. It can overrule everything the courts say. Um, it can overrule everything the previous government said um, and did. So, um, uh, a, a lot of the politics of the treaty and its uh, enforcement uh, have to be political engagement in the in the political uh, processes of our country. And of course, one of the difficulties that Indigenous people uh, uh, in many countries have is that um, as that have been been the sole occupants before the colonizers arrive, you're now the minority. Um, so the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples has become an important instrument. UNDRIP, some people call it, or anyway, the Declaration of the Rights of Indigenous Peoples um, has now been accepted by our government. They voted against it in the United Nations originally, but Canada, the United States, Australia, and New Zealand are the four standout countries, uh, the four countries where the colonizers achieved a very dramatic democratic um, <laughs> majority for themselves um, by taking over the countries. Um, and leaving indigenous peoples on reserves or, um, uh, or, 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 in our case, left to the native land court um, decision-making processes. Mm. Uh, so, yeah. David, just um, another comment or another question. In light of the comment about constitutional issues being seen as uh, too hard or controversial, what steps might help us move towards constitutional transformation, um, entrenching the Waitangi Tribunal, strengthening its powers. What are your thoughts about moving us towards constitutional? Matiki Mai Aotearoa, that report is an excellent report. Uh, it, it, it's, got, uh, it's, got a number of, it's got a number of options. Um, um, and, uh, and it should be taken much more seriously than it has been so far. Um, the uh, so so um, what one of the options is that there should be um, an upper house. Um, we don't have an upper house in New Zealand. We're one of the very few countries in the world that doesn't have an upper house in our parliament. Everything is done just by the House of Representatives. Um, but the upper house could be a body in which legislation could not be passed unless Māori assented to it, so that Māori would have uh, a, a say in anything that was of importance to Māori. Um, um, and um, those sort of options, then some people get all huffy and puffy and say, that's a Māori veto. Well, it might be a Māori veto, but that's because it affects Māori and prejudices them as they want to have a say, um, rather than just be outvoted all the time. Um, and um, and have people say in the district council represent you all. Yes, but it won't have a Māori ward, will it? Because the people come along in New Plymouth and say, even though the council says it wants to have a couple of Māori um, representatives on Māori wards, the, they get a referendum uh, and, uh, and it gets thrown out. So that's the big issue for constitutional reform. How, how in a country which is supposed to be democratic, can a permanent minority uh, which is, I know Māori population is increasing a little bit faster than the Pākehā one, but it's still way behind. And the Pākehā majority, or 
Well, I mean that might change too. I mean the the, the real Pākehā Tauiwi that are that uh, that are, are of British origins are becoming an increasing uh, proportion of the total population. Maybe when I, myself and Don Brash die, it'll get better. <laughs> well, it has to be. It has to be political processes, legal processes. Has to be challenges on little issues, big issues. You know, the the the, the, the discharge for the for the um, uh, what's the, um, the the power generation scheme at Tongariro, discharge taking water from the Upper Wanganui River. They've got to get consents every uh, so many years. Um, big issues like that, small issues like dairy um, conversion projects and um, um, rating issues, health issues that are really important. Uh, I, I actually think that the that there's been some very significantly positive changes in terms of recognition of tikana uh, in, in in our legal system, recognition of um, uh, of, of Māori providers in a, in a number of ways. But the, the most serious issues we face, I believe, at the moment for um, our nation are the way in which we incarcerate people uh, and the way in which we fail to deal with them well in our mental health institutions. Um, and uh, those are huge issues. And in that, in that area, we are worse off than we have ever been. Um, it has not got better since 1975 when the tribunal started. Some tribunal reports have addressed some of those issues uh, uh, and they haven't got any better as a result. Uh, we had a few um, sort of uh, efforts to make uh, kaupapa Māori issues more visible. Um, every government department has got its own name in Māori, hasn't it? The one I really like is, is, is the Inland Revenue Department. Because the Inland Revenue Department is called the Taritaki, and spelled T A A K E, but it's the it's the department that takes your money. I always reckon the, the Taritaki. <laughs> <laughs> it, doesn't make, it doesn't mean that the Treasury is a very bicultural institution, does it? <laughs> come on, come on. Um, Masua, sorry, just to um, go back to how we move forward we move towards constitutional transformation. Um, and there's some cordial about the way to move closer or get some speed on moving towards constitutional transformation really does sit with um, Ngai Pākehā understanding the history of our country, their own uh, privilege, societal privilege and so forth, and then the support move towards constitutional transformation so do you have any suggestions like one suggestion that came out from an attendee is um do you think all his low uh iwi driven historical issues brought by claimants should be taught in all the local schools so that all all tamariki and whanau actually know that actually there's mamai in this land and this is why and so forth what are your thoughts about engaging ngai Pākehā? Uh, from babies all the way to adults and this understanding of historical am I in order to facilitate a move or support a move for us to go to, towards transformation what do you think yeah well um uh, there, there are people in in many of our um universities and polytechs and so on that have been talking about white privilege and institutional racism um for a long time, um, uh, and there are some, you know, church groups and other and and um, and white network Waitangi and others that have been raising consciousness issues, uh, con conscientizing Pākehā. So there has been work done on that, mainly by a, a few people who are who are really keen for those issues to be raised. In terms of its impact on the on the wider population, that's really going to depend, I think, um, as your question suggests, on 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 what happens in our schools. So to be slightly positive about it, um, I was in um, in uh, in Parliament uh, in September last year uh, uh, on a, a day during Tuiki or Tureo Māori, and the people in Parliament that week had been um, stumbling their way around um, Tureo Māori. Uh, the Speaker 
tried to move motions in Tereo, got a bit of assistance from a couple of the fluent Rao speakers in the in the house. Um, but on one particular day, um, in the morning, there was a plaque put inside the house and blessed uh, at, at dawn to acknowledge the wars that had taken place in, in this land. Uh, there were plenty of other plaques about wars that had taken place at Gallipoli and the Western Front and, and Malaya and Vietnam, but this is the first time a plaque had been put into the House of Representatives in Parliament acknowledging the wars that had taken place in this land. Uh, and then um, following that, the Prime Minister made an announcement immediately following that, that um, history would be taught in New Zealand history will be taught in all schools by 2022. So the curriculum will be uh, will involve the teaching of history. And then in the afternoon was the first reading, and that's what I was there for, the first reading of um, a bill to pardon Turua Kenana, the, uh, the Poropiti of the um, people of Mungopohatu, Nai um, And um, virtually every um, speech in the House that afternoon by people from every political party was at least in part in Te Reo, um, and some of them were entirely in Te Reo, untranslated, untranslated until afterwards by, by Hansard. Um, and then um, just before Christmas, 21st of December, uh, a whole lot of us gathered at Mongopahatu, which is quite a remote place, quite difficult to get to, but the Governor General got there as well. Admittedly, she got by, there by helicopter, but the Governor General gave her assent to that bill in the meeting house where Terua had been arrested and where his son and another young man had been shot dead by the armed constabulary. Um, and so the comment that I made to Radio New Zealand at the time was, that's the history that our people need to know. They need to know, uh, they need to know both parts. They need to know that that's what happened in the past the, the, the treachery involved in and the unlawfulness actually by the police involved in that arrest and those deaths uh, at Mangapahatu, but also that we've now recognised that it was wrong and, and that there, there's a pardon um, that has been given to Rua Kenana and recognising that he did not do anything wrong and he was wrongly, wrongly um, um, uh, convicted. Um, and so you can take that... Uh, Different stories around the country, so it'll be it'll be that that see that's an area where I think lots of people ought to get involved. What is going to be in that school curriculum? Uh, so those young women from um, from the King Country was it Otrahonga High School was it um, um, that um, brought the petition um, to recognise um, the the land wars or the wars in 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 our country? Uh, Putake Otariri is now called. Um, so the next uh, the next uh, uh, year will be the Waikato Tainui people, Ngāti Maniapoto and others, will be gathering at Orako, um, and they'll be telling the stories of Orako from from the point of view of the people uh, who who live there. But those young women at the school said, well, "How come we how come we live uh, within a few miles, a few kilometres of this battle site, which is on the main road?" Uh, which cut straight through the battle side, and no one knows about it. No one teaches about it in our schools. So, um, yep. So, teaching in schools, teaching in universities, um, making lawyers more aware of what what tikana is. Judge Justice Joe Williams, who's now on the Supreme Court, our first Māori on the Supreme Court um, bench, he's absolutely determined that every judge in New Zealand is going to have to learn something about tikana. So, there's a whole range of ways in which these things go on. Uh, the Waitanga Tribunal has a small part in that, uh, it's, but it's a big, it's a big and wide issue, isn't it? Yeah, kapai, kapai. I'm aware that um, we only have a couple of minutes left, but there's a dying question coming from an attendee, um, which is a really good question. Is um, just quickly, what are your thoughts on Maori underrepresentation at local government level and the underlying reasons? Um, well, I, I, I did mention that just briefly, and. Uh, we have a, a local government legislation which um, requires a referendum for one reason only, uh, and that is when uh, Māori wards um, get proposed. Um, so uh, 
we, we have um, Māori seats in Parliament, and we've had them since 1867. Um, and uh, local government always considers itself not part of the Crown, but the, it does the work that um, it does the work of government in our local communities, in our local districts, and and, and, and rural areas. And um, Māori ought to be always represented on those bodies, not accidentally because one person happens to be uh, popular with a few of his neighbours or her neighbours. Um, I, I think it's a really big issue um, and uh, and it's not solved by having statutory advisory boards of the sort that Auckland Council has. It has to be that if we're, if we're going to be making decisions together, we need to be making decisions together, not having a, uh, a, a situation where the decisions are made following advice from a Māori body. Uh, that's 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 not tika. That's not consistent with the treaty. That's not consistent with um, where we should be in this nation by now. Kofi, Kofi, thank you. That is, that's actually a really uh, brilliant way to uh, note to kind of wrap on wrap, wrap up on because we are um, we are a couple of minutes over our time, but that's all right, Matua. I just um, is there any lasting Kupu, any last kupu that you would like to send to all those who are watching? Anything that you need to say? Okopo kia ratoura. Well, I, I'd, like, I'd like to say that um, what I've heard in many, many tribunal hearings is an incredible level of, of pain about the mamai, the hurts from the past. Uh, it, it, and what I would like Pākehā people of this nation to get a handle of is how generous Māori people are uh, in, 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 in challenging the decisions that get made that affect them badly, but doing it with so much generosity. The treaty settlement process in particular is so much generosity by Māori to accept 3 or 4% uh, as compensation, uh, um, well, redress is the word that, that gets used. So, um, you know, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's really important that claims like your one about, about how Māori are affected in the health system, the work you're doing on cancer issues, the work your, your own iwi are doing to try and get their, their, cla oh, their claims um, you know, understood and recognised, all of these things, uh, we need a, a, a great deal more grace and humility by the majority of the population. So let's hope that our, our school children learn a bit more and let's hope that we get to be in a better state. And, uh, and thank you for um, hosting me and thank you for your beautiful karakia at the beginning and probably we should end with a karakia, shouldn't we? Kapoi, yeah. Just to everyone, I know there's some more questions, so we'll look at how we can facilitate to answer those questions, um, especially the one that we didn't manage to answer about those wide claims of alienation of, uh, of land. Um, Nado to make your koto, but. Um, um, had a great feast, um, so thank you for providing that hākiri for all of us. Um, there are numerous comments about you being a living encyclopedia, <laughs> so uh, for that feast that you've given to us. Um, uh, totally satisfied, satisfied and appeased and full um, and we will use everything well I know specifically for me and my iwi and our claims will definitely take some of your uh, matauranga and how to move forward with them, the Waitangi Tribunal process um, and going forwards to friends transformation in a constitutional way. So Nada to Mahi Kyakwe. So we found we're going to just um kato the space and the end of the karakia. Um, and then we will be finishing. Um, thank you to everyone who has come to listen uh, and partake in this hākiri. Uh, so we'll just do this karakia um Nati Fano Morrison TNA. Tutawa mai runga, tutawa mai raro, tutawa mai roto, tutawa mai waho, kia tau ai te mauri tu, te mauri ora, ki te katoa, haumie, huie.
Tāiki. Tāiki. Kia ora koutou, kia ora tātou, kia ora koutou katoa. Nei, that's a minute.